again this will sound a little uh, abstract so we'll just take one numerical example not numerical one example to narrow uh, to understand this better okay uh, so example what is the rate of convergence let's work this out of the sequence xk is equal to 1 by a factorial so i'm giving you a sequence right the first term is 1 then 1 by 2 and then 1 by 6 and so on k factorial uh, so what is x star for this sequence 0 very intuitively it's clear that x star is equal to 0 right okay so let's take our so in this case it's a scalar sequence not a vector sequence so i don't need norm so if i take uh, for example xk plus 1 by xk what am i going to get 1 by k plus 1 right now 1 by k plus 1 does it what can i say look at the definitions hmm? 1 by k plus 1 as k tends to infinity tends to 0 right so this is super linear right? okay K can it also be quadratic i mean we found this it is satisfied super linear but is it also quadratic let's just check so we take x k plus 1 divided by x k squared what am i going to get k factorial divided by k plus 1 what is this limit as k tends to infinity or for large k infinity it's not it's not going to a positive number it's not for example here it is not being upper bounded by some constant number right so this is actually infinity as k increases right so therefore this sequence does not have quadratic rate of convergence it has super linear rate of convergence you will find always that there is going to be only one of it's not going to be both at the same time okay so this is uh, this is an example over here okay so we've uh, we've spent time talking about linear algebra we spent time talking about analysis uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is um, going to be about convexity, which is an uh, important part within analysis. Uh, so, let us see how are we doing on time. I think we are out of time. So, I will give it a pause over here. Okay. So, we will start with, yes, question. What about linear? Okay. So, let us see. What about linear over here? So, when I take this ratio over here, yeah is it linear or not for large k what is what is happening 1 upon k plus 1 if i take k very very large notice it's a, it's a very subtle point is there a restriction on r it's between 0 and 1 yes but little, little bit more specific than that is it a closed interval 0 1 or an open interval open. it's an open interval that means 0 is not included in that so if I it, it just says for all large k if I take k to be arbitrarily large r will actually tend to 0 so it slips out of linear and goes into super linear right for linear you will want that r to be a strictly positive number and 1 by k factorial is not okay so it's a subtle point but that's why this this is very crucial that it is an open interval 0 to 1. r can still be less than 0. 0.5 yeah hmm. right that is one way of looking at it but the i mean the comprehensive way is that if it is satisfying a higher definition i declare it to have that convergence okay yeah no 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 if it is q quadratic it is a you say it has quadratic rate of convergence okay 
you declare the higher one. From a practical point of view, that is what you are interested in, right? So, quadratic will of course be as fast as linear, but it is much faster than linear. That is the sense in which we will use it. Okay, so let us uh, let me just go over what we have looked at, right? So, um, we started with uh, this review of linear algebra. Now, those of you who have not taken linear algebra can after this class take a call about how comfortable you feel with linear algebra, right? Vector norms, matrix norms, uh, fundamental subspaces, eigenvalue decomposition, singular value decomposition. Uh, something about convergence of a sequence, uh, definitions of upper bounds and rate of convergence. These are some of the things that we have looked at. All of this is in the class notes on the website. So, please do have a look at it and let me know if you spot typos. I am sure there are lots of typos. So, let me know please. Yeah. Well, you can, okay, so how I calculated in the case of the student, how I cal gave him this number of three times the age of the universe was that uh, it was a combinatorial problem. There were, uh, there were 100 possibilities. I mean, there was a, the, in, the uh, variable of optimization was of length 100. Each of the vector, I mean, the, each of the components had two options or three options, 0, 1 and 2 or something like that. So, you can think of how many possible 3 to the power 100, okay. Then you can say I am using an Intel Core i9 whatever, one calculation let us say takes one microsecond or whatever, one iteration takes that much time to evaluate is that a, a, a good solution or not. Uh, and then you just multiply it out together and you get age of universe, right. So, many times you can do these things just by plain back of the envelope calculation. It is not always possible. Here it was possible because I knew that there, this is the exhaustive list, the solution is sitting somewhere in that, right. So, you can calculate, but usually it may not be possible. Yeah, because the algorithm was brute force. So, you can hand the chit to either, any of us and head out. Yeah, question? Yeah. Right. 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 Correct. Right. Right. But why is it true that A is also equal to U log B plus B? We know U, we know L, we know zero. Hmm. How is the proof coming from that? Oh, from where do you get the proof? Uh, it's a constructive proof. Um, if you want. Um, so, if you look at my course website for the linear algebra, there is a proof for how you come up with the SVD, the decomposition starting with exactly what you said. So, it is not something I can tell you in one sentence. You build it up step by step and you you do it exactly like that. You form A transpose A, A transpose and you factorize it. There is something called the sure decomposition. That is a very important theorem that is used. The sure decomposition is used to convert the EVD into an SVD. So, it is it's an involved proof, it is not very easy, which is why most uh, starting linear algebra courses do not give you the proof, they will just say here is decomposition, be happy. Question? Yeah. 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 Inverse. Hmm. Hmm. The condition number will be the same. So, condition number you can think of as an amplifying factor. So, if, if to begin with if B has small amount of noise, the amplification will result into a let us say a reasonable amount of noise. But if B has much more noise, then the amplifi amplification factor is the same, it only depends on A. It tells you the amplification factor. So, it is a relative quantity. You have to know what is the noise in B so that you know that actually how much noise are you going to get. 
and actually i uh, i skipped one detail you can have noise in a also right so there is a lengthy you know, there could be how you modeling error in a for example can modeling error can give you a, an error in a so this condition number captures a lot of these things so people who do numerical analysis are very very particular about condition number something like that Hmm. Right, so then we take superlinear. We go for the higher one. 